Powell Rising. We continue our series tonight, highlighting the recent rise in water levels at the lake. Tonight, along with photojournalist Gabe Rodriguez, I'm showing the boom the water has brought to the economy. It's incredible. I was here at Lone Rock in March of 2022, more than a year ago, and I could actually walk all the way to the rock because there was no water here. The year 2024 is supposed to be a make or break year for Lake Powell. After over a decade of declining levels, the reservoir had reached critically low points. Glen Canyon Dam struggled to generate power and water supplies were stretched thin. Then the unthinkable happened. Massive snows piled up across the high country last winter. As the huge snowpack began melting this spring, the inflows were off the charts. Rangers reported beaches re-emerging they hadn't seen in years. This summer, the reservoir is rising at a foot per day in certain places. Lake Powell is gaining over a trillion gallons of water each month. But no one could explain why this is happening now, after so many dry years. Were powerful climate shifts underway in the Colorado River Basin? Or was this a temporary reversal amid the ongoing drought? Scientists scrambled for answers, but the data was incomplete. But with another dry winter looming as 2024 ends, questions remain. Would this be a brief reprieve? Or will the conditions truly change? The extreme rise of Lake Powell in one year left experts stunned, and its future as uncertain as ever. Join us, as we're about to unveil the sudden rise of Lake Powell that changes everything. During the early 20th century, an increase in population and economic development in the western U.S. increased the demand for reliable water and hydroelectric power from the Colorado River. The Colorado River Compact of 1922 apportioned the river's water between the upper and lower basin states. This created the impetus to develop the river's resources. In the 1930s and 1940s, the federal government conducted extensive surveys and studies of potential dam sites on the Colorado River. Glen Canyon was identified as an ideal location. The 1956 Colorado River Storage Project Act authorized the construction of several dams, including Glen Canyon Dam, to regulate river flows and support water storage. In the 1950s and early 1960s, Infrastructure like roads and rail lines were built to access and support the dam construction site in remote Glen Canyon. Glen Canyon Dam construction began in 1956 and was completed in 1964. It took over eight years to construct the massive concrete dam. With the dam in place, Lake Powell began filling in the early 1960s, backed up behind the 710-foot tall dam. The reservoir took over a decade to fully fill. Ever since, it has served many purposes including fishing, agriculture, tourism, and power generation. But for over a decade now, the lake has been experiencing consecutive periods of highs and lows due to long and periodic droughts that always impact the Colorado River Basin. After the brutal punishing drought that had gripped Utah over the past several years, many were worried about what would be left of the reservoirs that at this state and provide so much. Ranches and farms were struggling with little water to irrigate the lands. Towns were imposing tough water restrictions on residents as the reservoirs fell lower and lower. A few years ago at this time, the outlook seemed dire. Statewide, the reservoirs had sunk to only around half full. Places like Deer Creek and Jordanelle were shadows of their former selves. Vast stretches of their basins laying embarrassingly dry. People even wondered if they'd ever recover. But then, the winter of 2023 brought a welcome change. Snow began falling in the mountains where waters are born, in greater amounts than we'd seen in years. As the white powder piled up week after week, a glimmer of hope took shape. And now, as the warming rays of spring trigger the snow to melt and rush downstream, filling our cherished reservoirs once more, the numbers are nothing short of astonishing. A full 90% capacity statewide, after so much uncertainty and struggle, it is an incredible relief. Just think all the wildlife who depend on these waters, the farmers readying their soil, the families looking to cool off this summer. They'll find the reservoirs are full of life again. Perhaps this bounty is a sign the drought is loosening its grip. For now, 
we can all breathe a little easier and be grateful for whatever rains may fall. Of all the cherished reservoirs in Utah, there is one causing particular concern, Lake Powell. Over the years, while the others have rebounded close to full, Powell remains stubbornly low at only around 35% capacity. The falling waterline, hurting more than just views such that it threatened the very lifeblood of Lake Powell. Without sufficient depth, the massive turbines of Glen Canyon Dam has been struggling to spin and generate the power that lights millions of homes. Low levels also risk damaging intakes that supply water to the arid southwest. If it drops much more, the reservoir that helped tame the mighty Colorado River risks becoming a mere shadow of its former self. As a key source of the region's water and energy security, seeing Powell in such a diminished state taps into real worries about our climate-changed future. After years below normal, what will it take for its waters to rise above the sand once more? With negotiations ongoing and role limited, all we could do was hope the high country brings a big snowpack to aid Lake Powell's recovery. Its health remained so critical for a certain period of time. However, things suddenly changed. But is this truly a remarkable change? Stay with me till the end of this video to find out. Lake Powell is no ordinary reservoir. At its maximum, it holds over 20 million acre feet of water over eight times the capacity of Strawberry Reservoir. But a body of water this immense comes with unique challenges. At over 180 miles long, Powell spans not just Utah's borders, but those of her neighbor Arizona. It also falls under the jurisdiction of the Colorado River Compact, the century-old agreement governing that mighty rivers flow through seven U.S. states and Mexico. This means Powell's levels aren't just dictated by Utah's local precipitation. They rise and fall based on complex calculations of water usage and hydroelectric needs coordinating millions of lives across the basin. In dry times, these policies may dictate Powell sacrifice some water to prop up other reservoirs downstream. So while Utah's reservoirs near capacity show the bounty their snowpack provides, Powell's low levels are a sober reminder of how intertwined their water security is with those in other arid regions. We all must work together in both plenty and lack, sharing in nature's gifts and stresses alike. It's a daunting responsibility, balancing the needs of so many over such a vast terrain. May understanding and cooperation guide their efforts, that all who depend on the Colorado River may know its waters will not run dry. The once mighty Colorado River lifeline to 40 million souls. Its future is uncertain as the drought drags on. The agencies know they must be prudent, make sacrifices today to safeguard tomorrow. That's why in their wisdom, the Bureau of Reclamation reworked the rules of operation for Glen Canyon and Hoover, the twin titans that have tamed the river's flow for a century. No small task to find equilibrium for so many competing needs. If dry skies should still deny the highlands their healing waters, the directives change. First, Glen Canyon must reduce its releases, conserving more in Lake Powell against the day no rain arrives. Its hydropower output scales back to keep a minimum depth. And downstream, Hoover too feels the impacts. Less water passes through its gates to fill orders in the lower basin. Though it pains them, Southern Nevada and Arizona must make do with less, that Powell may be fortified. Always the Bureau weighs the long view, protecting infrastructure that remains the region's single most crucial resource. Through shared sacrifice today, may all who depend on the Colorado still find water on the morrow, if the drought's grip holds steadfast on the land. Our common future depends on common cause. After years of steadily declining, hope for Lake Powell seemed lost. Each passing day exposed more of its sandy shoreline as the life-giving waters slipped away. But sometime over the last long winter past, a quiet shift began. Though snow was far from plentiful, each new storm brought a morsel more to the highlands' cold embrace. And with the melting sun's arrival, a small stream of gifts found their way to Powell's receiving arms once more. Now as spring's fullness swells the flows, observers can see with their own eyes, the reservoir that had shrunk further each season has at last halted its retreat. Though still pale compared to memories of fullness past, its waters have advanced up the slopes nearly 25 feet higher than this time last year. 
And with the snowfield's steady conversion and runoff's continuing deliveries, experts say this momentum will only grow. Step by step Powell will reclaim more of its once overflowing self through the coming months. It remains a fragile gainsay against the drought's persistence. But for now, there is confidence this reconstitution has only just begun. In this small victory may we find renewed faith that even in our driest hours, renewal is possible when we stand together. As Lake Powell's waters receded in recent years, tensions arose between those whose livelihoods depend on its recreation and the agencies tasked with its delicate management. Some Utah leaders grew vocal in their frustration feeling the reservoir's low levels unduly harmed local tourism economies. They questioned whether the feds truly understood the human impacts of their interstate allocation policies. But the Bureau knows well the complexity of balancing the needs of the entire Colorado River Basin. From the Rockies to Baja, over 40 million lives and countless livelihoods rely on carefully coordinated operations of its dams and reservoirs. The Bureau points to the labyrinth of compacts, laws and contracts spanning a century of agreements as seven states and more negotiate shared ownership of this lifeline's flows. Short-term demands must give way to long-view stewardship through inevitable wet and dry cycles alike. While no one wishes to see communities suffer lost revenues, no easy answers exist in orchestrating the river's governance. Both viewpoints come from legitimate places of concern. Perhaps through open and understanding dialogue, Together we can forge solutions respecting all parties' interests. With water as our common denominator, none shall be left behind in both sharing its gifts and stresses. The clock was ticking for Lake Powell. Without decisive action, experts warned its levels could soon compromise Glen Canyon Dam's functions. But Utah's leaders weren't willing to lose this crucial cog in the river's works without a fight. General Candace Heyer gathered her troops, hatching a daring plan to aid their parched neighbor. Release the waters from flaming gorge, came the order. And so Utah's bounteous upstream reserve poured forth, a small but vital lifeline to fortify Powell in its hour of need. Each extra drop bought time, allowing Glen Canyon more days of power generation and water delivery. But Utah's leaders knew this generosity came at a cost water loaned with the hope it would be repaid. Now at the basin-wide negotiating table, Utah stakes its claim. The Colorado owes us for aiding in its administration. Return to us the flows we lent in good faith until the drought breaks. Whether their appeal will be heard remains uncertain. But in lending aid selflessly when others faltered, Utah showed the true meaning of partnership on which the Great River depends. Such acts of courage may yet be the seed of stronger ties to carry all through harder times ahead. After the low snowpacks of recent years, Utahns watched this winter's totals with cautious hope. Would it be enough to quench the deep thirst of land and reservoirs alike? As March dawned, a collective breath was held. Then slowly, almost imperceptibly at first, the great thaw began in the high country. Rivulets formed amid the white fields, joining into streams and creeks carrying their precious load downward. By April, over half of the accumulated snow had surrendered to the sun's warming. But instead of a dreaded deluge, the melt proceeded at an ideal measured pace. Flows into the reservoirs and rivers swelled but did not overwhelm their banks. Now as May arrived, the snow lines recede further up the slopes each day. Hydrologists reported the spring runoff maximizing storage capacity while minimizing spillage and waste. An optimal scenario playing to the landscape strengths. Does this signal an end to parched skies? Only time will say. But for now, communities can breathe a sigh of relief knowing this season recharged depleted aquifers and filled thirsty basins once more. Through cooperation with nature's rhythms, renewal shows its benevolent face again. That concludes the presentation of today's video. If you have any additional thoughts or reactions to share regarding this astonishing video, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and be sure to check out the video currently displayed on your screen. You won't want to miss it, as it is truly amazing and mind-blowing.